All right, can you keep a secret? <laughs> We're planning a little surprise party um, at our house. And so today I was wondering if we could clean, declutter, organize together. There's a few little projects around the house that we're finishing up. We could work alongside each other. I'll tell you what the surprise is, who it's for, and some fun little things that we got to prepare for it. Okay, so like I said, uh, I want to clean and I'm always decluttering as I'm cleaning, right? But also uh, we've tackled a few little projects around the house too that need to get wrapped up. So I'll show you those as well. And I don't know about you, do you need like dates on the calendar to like really get everything pulled together? I That's absolutely how I work. So I'm really glad for this opportunity. So Tom and I actually worked on this bathroom this week. It was the only room in the house that did not have the new flooring in it that we've been putting in. And so he was able to finish that up. And then he had also had the idea that we should paint this bathroom the same color as our other one. So it's Palisade Blue, I believe by Sherman Williams. I'll put it in the description, but I'll show you the painting process and also who the surprise is for. Okay, so my mom is turning 65 this week. Mom, I hope you don't mind me telling all of our friends your age, <laughs> but if I just turned 40, then probably people can kind of guess if I say there's a milestone birthday <laughs> this week. And so the kids had said like, hey, wouldn't it be fun if we had a surprise party for Nana? They adore their Nana and we're so grateful. We get to live close to them. Um, she's just such a big part of their life and she teaches them things and she loves them and cares for them so well. She's everything that you would hope uh, a Nana to be. And so Tom and I are so grateful for both of my parents that um, everything they do with the kids and like they're just always willing to help and they just come and grab them and I mean it's truly why like when we started having kids we're like oh let's maybe move closer <laughs> right like just anticipating like the help that we would need and we're so glad that we did because it has just been so awesome and we feel fortunate because I know many would like to live closer to family or many would like to have supportive family and that's not always the case and so I'm sorry about that I feel a little bit spoiled even telling you <laughs> about this right but just so so grateful so this bathroom uh like I said Tom had mentioned like hey why don't we paint it that light color blue I liked the color in here um he Tom had picked it out he's very good at picking out paint colors and um, I always thought it felt nice, but he thought like, it just might be a little dark and heavy because this is actually a pretty small room, right? And so I actually really enjoy painting. So I'm like, okay, let's do it. And the other thing I like about painting is it forces you to like pull stuff out of a room and then you just kind of naturally do a little decluttering <laughs> as well. So um, it actually, it, it, it did take a little while to paint because they're just like, I painted around the shelves and, and everything, but it's just good like mind processing time, I think. Um, but we do need to put everything back on the shelves and wipe them down quick. And then also I was questioning the shower curtain and if we should put in a different shower curtain or not. Okay, so this shower curtain, I have always loved it. And the other color that our bathroom was, it matched perfectly. I got it on clearance at Target for $6. We have had it for six years. So that's $1 a year that we've had it. <laughs> and it was funny, uh, after we got the room painted, I'm like, I just feel like there should be a light floral, pretty shower curtain in here. It does not need to be replaced, but I just thought it'd be fun to have something new in here. And Adeline, our oldest, walked in and she was like, there, there should be a shower curtain with like little flowers on it and stuff. I'm like, I know, right? Did you know that that's actually kind of hard to find? And so I looked at Target and Marshalls and Home Goods, and I did not find anything. And then I found this one at Walmart. It's I don't I don't know that it's perfect, but I think it'll look nice. And it was only eleven dollars, so I'm gonna put this up. And then I also got a new shower liner as well. Next week, um, we're having some gentlemen come down to help Tom with some of his projects. So grateful for that. And they'll be using our shower. And this shower liner has just gotten lots of mineral deposits and everything on it. Uh, I would love to ask you, I don't like having to replace the plastic liner all of the time. Um, but even despite having a water softener and everything, like it still just gets guzzy over time. And so is there something else that we could use instead? Um, I am all ears and I have the bandwidth now to entertain something like that. In the past, it wasn't always possible. So I'm not trying to project my convictions onto others. I'm just saying now I'm in a space where I could think about something more environmentally friendly. So let me know if you have any ideas about that. Okay, it's a little girly. <laughs> it's a little more 
feminine than I was uh, thinking it was gonna be, but it is very pretty, isn't it? I do feel like it matches like the scheme in here more now, so it's okay. We're actually put the other one, the other shower curtain in our camper. We needed, there's like a cartoon one out there that we haven't really loved, and so I didn't wanna buy a shower curtain for a camper, even at thrift stores, like they're still really expensive, so we're gonna put this one out there. So it'll get a second life, and if we really don't love this, we can always swap them anyways. So, all right, but for now, we're gonna leave it. Okay, we have a little more to do in here, but I wanna tell you a story real quick. Okay, so I remember the first year that I had been simplifying our home, and that fall we were gonna host Thanksgiving at our house with all of Tom's family. And so my goal, when all his family came down and some of them were gonna stay with us, that I would have our whole house decluttered, that they could go anywhere in the house, it wouldn't be a big deal. And I remember I was so discouraged because I still ended up with random piles of stuff on the floor in our master bedroom, and a lot of piles, <laughs> right? And I was so frustrated because I'm like, I've been doing all this work. I mean, I had made so many trips to the donation center by that point, I had felt like we had gotten rid of like everything, right? Where you're just like, I've gotten rid of so much. How can there still be stuff left? And it was still like those random piles of like paper clutter from the kitchen counter. I just remember looking at the floor and like kind of like lying to the room, like all these different piles and just being like so frustrated with myself. And I think too worrying that they were just gonna live there forever because that had been my experience in the past. And I really hadn't made as much progress as I thought. But I look back now and I smile because I'm like, it was still so worth it and I didn't achieve the goal for that celebration or that get together, but now here we are and it really is so much easier to get ready to host things at our house. So I know sometimes we have these goals for ourselves and it feels like we didn't reach them and we feel like a failure, but keep going because you're gonna get there and it is gonna be so worthwhile, so keep going. Okay, as long as we're in here, I'm gonna pull this bedroom together real quick. And today's video is sponsored by Helix and I want to cordially invite you to a really great night's sleep. So uh, let's go over the details real quick, right? Where, your bedroom, when, every single night. <laughs> you should be getting a great sleep every single night. Who, it's for you and whoever else <laughs> you share your bed with. How? Well, you just simply go online and you take the Helix sleep quiz. It only takes a couple minutes. You fill it out for yourself along with your partner and you just put in all the details. Helix cares about you. They want this event that every single night to be tailored and custom fit to you. So you put in your preferred sleeping positions. So for like Tom and I, we are like stomach and side sleepers. And then you also put in, do you currently have any back pain? For Tom, it was literally every single night. Me, it was a little more occasional but I'm, I'm more one to take action and that's why I was like, Tom, we need a new mattress, <laughs> right? And then you're matched with your perfect mattress. And so for us, it's the Helix Dusk Lux and it comes delivered to your door. Shipping in the US is completely free and it's very convenient because it's rolled up in a box. And so the box is easy to bring into your bedroom, whether it's on a main floor or an upper level and you pull out the mattress, you unroll it and then you let it take shape. And then that same evening, you get to sleep on it and start to enjoy this great sleep event every single night, <laughs> right? And don't worry, you get 100 nights to test out your Helix mattress. So you'll get in your home, you'll start sleeping on it, and just make sure that it's the right fit for you. If not, they will gladly take care of exchanging it for you. And then beyond that, you also get a 10-year warranty. So it is the gift that keeps on giving. If you'd like to RSVP to this wonderful event, go ahead and click on our link down below. You're gonna save 20% off your Helix mattress and get two free pillows as well. So you're gonna get your house decluttered, you're gonna get good sleep, and you're gonna be hosting parties all the time. <laughs> this is the um, electric blanket Tom got me for Christmas. It has been such a good gift. I use it every night and once I'm snuggled in, then you can turn it off. I'm just really hoping that finally it's gonna be warm enough here in Minnesota that I'm not gonna need it anymore, but I'm not gonna pack it away just yet. <laughs> we'll see, but this room comes together so quickly now and good news, no piles on the floor, no piles on the floor at all. And that just feels so good. So again, keep going, you'll get there too. It's so awesome. So I just wanna wipe down these shelves quick because they're like this repurposed wood that they don't clean up super well, but at least you can get like most of the dust off of them and then put the decor back on. I keep it pretty simple these days. Um, the basket on the bottom holds extra toilet paper and um, I don't know, I just desire a lot of simplicity right now, I think, because we're in kind of a hectic season and it just makes it easy to clean and it doesn't attract any other kind of clutter. So 
that works out really well. And then as long as I'm over here, I'll just give the toilet a quick wipe down. I had, you know how rollers kind of like splatter a little bit of paint. I noticed there was some paint on the top of the toilet. So trying to get that off and just wipe it down quick. And then this area is pretty good to go. All right, next let's get this vanity cleaned up and then I still have the old shower curtains here at my feet. So it just doesn't magically disappear, does it? No, so <laughs> let's deal with that real quick. You know, a tip I heard one time, I was looking up tips for like speed cleaning or if you have company coming over. And one tip I had seen was to empty the garbages, especially in the bathrooms. And as I think about like, if, even if you have limited time to prepare for guests to come over, that emptying the garbage really does make a big difference. It just feels cleaner and nice. And you're not like coming into someone else's space, like it's ready for you. So one idea, even if you don't have a lot of time when you're cleaning is still to empty the trash. Okay, so this bathroom's pretty clean. It comes together pretty quickly, but we had noticed that the faucet had gotten really like scaled up and had all the white stuff on it. So it was causing it to kind of wildly spray everywhere and often splash out of the sink. And so I had seen this trick quite a while ago where you just warm up some vinegar and use a baggie to put it underneath there in a rubber band. And so you just warm up the vinegar in a mug, put it in the baggie, rubber band it around the faucet, and then let it sit for like 10 minutes. And then the scaly stuff actually comes off pretty easily. There was a little bit left. Um, I didn't know how aggressive I could get with like steel wool or something because I didn't want to wreck the finish of it. And so I didn't, I didn't want to spend too, time, too much time on it or whatever, but just doing that now makes it so the water comes out really nice and evenly again. So even though I didn't get it all off, it works so much better now. And it, that was actually really quick and easy <laughs> to do. So we've done that with our kitchen faucet and then Tom actually just recently did it with the shower head too. And it worked really well and is super simple. So really the only area that was kind of out of control in our house as far as like decluttering and egg cleaning is the kids area um, where the girls have their desks and then we also keep like all of our homeschool stuff and projects, like anything the kids work on, that's kind of their area to contain it. And so it very regularly gets cluttered and, and kind of messy looking. And in the beginning, that made me feel like a really big failure. And <laughs> like, I thought I've decluttered and I'm doing all these things, but I've just realized that it requires regular maintenance. And even though we keep the, the inventory pretty low, if there's four kids keeping stuff there and actively using it every day, it's just gonna happen. Now, the good thing is though, that now they're able to tackle these areas on their own and to get them all back together. Uh, Adeline, our 13 year old, is very instrumental in helping to like give instruction and helping everyone. Um, but the girls were able to do their desks and then Corbin was working on some of his stuff there. And so it actually all came back together pretty quickly. And so I just wanna encourage you that sometimes it feels like with our kids stuff and their rooms and their areas that they might never get the hang of it or it's always gonna require a ton of oversight, but I wanna encourage you that I don't think it has to be that way. Obviously our kids are eight through 13 now and we've had lots of practice, but it might pleasantly surprise you how quickly they can start to learn these tactics. And one other thing I heard just recently um, from our friend Aurora is she'll tell her kids whether they're picking up toys or craft supplies or treasures or whatever they have, she'll say, anything that you pick up, you get to keep anything I have to pick up, I get to keep. And I'm like, that's just such a like positive way, like positive spin to put on it. And what happens through that process is you'll see the items that your kids have lost value for, which there's nothing wrong with that. But as parents, let's not try to continue to manage items that they don't even care about anymore. So if there's stuff that is continually being left out on the floor and they don't even care to pick it up, it's a good sign we can either throw that stuff away or donate it because they've already moved on and they don't have value for it anymore. It's just part of life, <laughs> right? 
And we, so we got a few decorations off of Amazon that were 65 and birthday themed, but then I also just wanted to have a bunch of fresh flowers. And so I had gotten this one arrangement. It was actually the centerpiece at a fundraising event that I got to do a workshop at the previous weekend. Um, so it's for it was for World Encounter and they provide micro loans for women in Tanzania. And so it was such a cool, program it was really fun to learn more about it and to be at their event and so then uh the centerpieces were available for donations too to the organization and as i was just sitting at the table i'm like this is so beautiful i really want to have this for the party next weekend i knew that maybe not all the flowers would last the full week and so actually all of the roses there they were beyond their life but all of the greens were still good and tom had gotten me some red roses and so i was like okay what can we mix in with the red to make it party ready and so then i just got some of these little carnations from walmart and i think it worked really well and so i use so i wanted to do that arrangement first and and start with that that was actually fairly easy because of the like the starting place that i had <laughs> now for the rest of you if you know anything about flower arranging and you watch me do the rest of these this is very amateur right but i'm okay now with like the learning process and the only experience i've really had with like flower arranging is i think um in 4-h when we were growing up we did like some workshops on it and so they had shared a few principles but um anyways it's just something that i think is you just it just takes practice and maybe there's some more skills i could probably learn <laughs> too but i wanted to just have different arrangements to have around the house and so, so my plan was to leave the big one on the kitchen counter and then to have ones for the coffee table and the bathrooms too and so um, i had plenty of flowers to be able to do that so that worked out and then also while i was doing that then i asked adeline if she would start mixing up the bundt cake so uh for this celebration i wanted to make the white chocolate raspberry it's a white cake mix with white cheesecake pudding and then you put you mix it up like you do all of our button cakes and then it has like a cup of, and a quarter of sour cream in it like it's a very good cake and then you add some raspberry preserves to it and so we've made this one a few times and it is so good <laughs> it's so good and especially for spring in this time of the year um, and our color scheme and everything the the white chocolate raspberry seemed to be the right fit for it and so Adeline's very good at making these cakes now too because they're so easy I can link to our our um, easy awesome bun cake recipe book if you're interested but they're so easy and they always turn out and so uh, she makes that up and we got that in the oven too hmm it looks a little overdone and it didn't rise up as much as they normally do and so I'm a little bit worried about it darn it my bun cakes always turn out Adeline made it and I th I mean I think she did she put in everything she was supposed to and everything um all right well I'm gonna let it cool for a few minutes and we'll flip it over on a cake stand and we'll just see it's just hard when it's for a party you can't really like cut into it and make sure it's okay right I don't know maybe we can Ugh, I don't know. <laughs> and so then Diana got here and we started working on the food and I really lean on her a lot when it comes to food. She entertains a lot more than me. I What I love about Princeton and his Indian family is that they put so much value on getting together and spending time together and celebrating everything and so she's got it pretty dialed in and she kind of knows like how much food to get. I think historically we always have too much food and so she had a good idea so i'd gone to costco earlier in the week and gotten just a couple of quiche those like quiche that you just warm up in the oven and spinach and artichoke dip and crackers and then she brought stuff for fruit and yogurt parfaits which is a really good idea and people seem to really enjoy that when we've had them before and then also some charcuterie stuff and then adeline also made a pan of chocolate chip cookie bars and then we had the bundt cake and then some drinks and um, again, trying to keep it pretty simple, but still, we still wanted it to feel very nice, obviously for my mom's birthday too. Okay, actually it looks, from this angle, it actually looks really good and it smells good. We're not quite centered. So maybe it is okay. I don't know. I guess we'll have to wait and see. <laughs> and then I didn't want to go overboard with games, but I thought it would be fun to have like one game. And so we were looking at a game that would be kind of fun for all ages. And so have you seen this game? Oh, have you played this game? I thought this was like 
a very classic game called pa Pass the Parcel, where you wrap up a gift, and and we, we want to do two of them. Um, I'll show you what's inside. But you wrap like a bunch of layers. So Adeline did 10 layers on each of these packages. And then everyone sits in a circle and you pass the gifts around while playing music. And then when the music stops, who's ever holding it takes off a layer of wrapping. And then you keep going until you get to the last one and whoever unwraps the last layer of wrapping paper gets to keep the gift. And so it's very simple. Um, I know there's the other like variations where you have like, you know, you have dice and you have to roll doubles and then you steal the gifts and all that. And I'm like, I don't want anything to do with stealing gifts <laughs> at this party, right? And so this seemed like it would be fairly like low key, hopefully not a lot of drama. I mean, there's, yeah, anyways. <laughs> so Adeline was so kind to wrap and wrap and wrap um, these gifts. And so on the inside, we decided to do like one adult, one and kid one. So I'm sure you've probably seen other just talking about these glass jars with the lids. They're really cute. They come in a set of four and you can use them for like overnight oats or uh, coffee or they're just really pretty. And then they have a little spoon that comes with it too. So we put some candy and some um, honey roasted nuts inside and wrapped that up. And then in the other one, we wanted to have a younger one and we figured they could switch if they got didn't get to the right people um, with some toy trucks in it too. So that is, uh, that's our one game. I think it'll be fine. And it's gonna be really nice outside too so everyone can just go outside and play <laughs> too while the adults visit, <laughs> right? So, but it did, just so you know, it did take quite a while to do all the layers of wrapping for Adeline. And have you noticed, I'm sure you've noticed this too, like parties actually take a lot of time when you do the decorations and all of the food and all of the cleaning. I mean, we kept this fairly simple, but we still have like hours and hours into it, right? Which mom, I'm very happy to do. Like we are, of course we wanted to do that for her, right? I'm not complaining, but isn't it amazing how much more time it takes than what you're planning? And like I said, you know, we got these uh, decorations off of Amazon. I'll link to them down below. But this tassel garland that we had, I had ordered, I didn't realize you would actually have to like fold and assemble all of the tassels, right? When you look at the picture online, you're like, oh, that's so nice. You just hang it up, <laughs> right? But I was like, when we were opening it, I'm like, oh no, <laughs> right? So even that ended up taking, I don't know, 15 to 20 minutes for Adeline and I to work on it together. And had we been really pressed for time, like in the past with cleaning and getting the house all together, I probably would have just forgone it and been like, whatever, we're gonna skip that. It's too much for right now. Um, but we had the time to do it. We sat and visited while we did it. It wasn't that big a deal. It was fun and we liked how it looked afterwards. And so um, I just think it still amazes me. Like, I didn't think this party would take as long as it did. Cause I'm like, okay, the house is pretty ready to go. Like we're doing pre-bought food and just some simple decorations, but it still actually took quite a while to do. And again, very happy to do it, but I don't think we always have a realistic idea in our head how long it's gonna take for these things. And then they're just so stressful, right? It's just so stressful at the end. So anyways, I'm gonna keep beating this drum. Like having the house simplified and so easy to clean just really did make the rest of all of this a lot more enjoyable and less stressful. All right, I think we're ready to have a party. I think my mom is gonna be thoroughly surprised <laughs> and the kids are really excited. I truly think that this is the first time that I'm entertaining at our home where I've fully been able to enjoy the full process of sending out invites and planning the food and making the food and doing the decorations and planning a game. Like it felt like because I have reduce the amount of time that it takes to clean and, and get the house ready because that was so much less this time around. I got to focus on the more fun parts and I don't feel so drained now going into it and like, oh, I didn't do this and I hope no one notices this and, and just feel like I'm scrambling so that when the party starts, you're just like tired, <laughs> right? So, or you're thinking of the things you forgot and like running to do stuff quick, right? And so that just feels so good. And so I know decluttering is a lot of work. I know there's a lot of fear sometimes about what if I get rid of something I need or what, but I would say keep pushing through, keep making those tough decisions because to get to this point and have things like this just be so enjoyable, it is so worth it. And it is just the gift that keeps on giving when we declutter our homes. So um, I'll be sure to let you know how it goes. If you follow me on Instagram and Facebook, I like to give updates over there as well, but I love you. I hope you have a really good day and I'll see you again soon.